video, 33 Things Women Should Stop Saying and Doing to One Another. Hello everyone, my name is Misty Nicole with LadyPreferstoSave.com and welcome to another video. This video has really been on my mind for quite some time and so I wanted to put some thoughts together on 33 things that I have observed and in my own humble opinion feel that women should stop saying and doing to one another this year and beyond. The first thing women should stop saying is, you look great, have you lost weight? On the surface, this looks like the perfect compliment. After all, who doesn't want to hear that they've lost a little weight? Are you trying to say that she was fat before and wasn't pretty before losing weight? Seriously, this so-called compliment just doesn't stand up. Why not make a sincere compliment to your friend and see if you could perhaps get some tips on how to make your own life a little bit better and healthy using the B word. Other than the fact it's just plain rude, the B word tends to be used whenever a woman is trying to assert herself. Even if you think a woman has stepped over the line, try thinking about what about her statement got under your skin. Then use that as an insight to see the understanding and the behavior that could possibly stimulate a conversation because name calling never leads to anything positive. Saying, does this make me look fat? This is kind of a moot point question because no one is ever truthfully going to answer this. And besides, you should wear things that make you feel confident regardless of other people's opinions. Saying, when are you going to have a baby? As women, when we hit childbearing age, this question never stops. And not only does the question pose the thought that being a mother is the end-all and be-all of being a woman, it's also very insincere and can hurt the feelings of women who have suffered infertility at the loss of children. Spreading rumors. Sadly, some women never grow past their high school years, and what we know to be true about rumors is that they are rarely ever true, and it is these same slanderous beliefs that hold women back. Instead of focusing on something that could be an actuality in a woman's life, it's easier to make up something slanderous about her instead. Saying, I don't understand why you're single. Women do not have to be in a relationship to be fulfilled, and being single does not mean that a woman's flawed competing with other women. Life is not a competition and weighing your accomplishments against the gauge of other people is never going to find you getting ahead of them in life, in business, or in the home. Because when women compete with each other, no one ever wins. Instead of competing with one another, let's celebrate our differences and use those as strengths to build the bond that we have in our individual communities. It makes us each stronger and it gives us something to learn from. Comparing our bodies. Women's bodies undergo tremendous change throughout their lives. Some women are curvier, some women are more anglical. Some people will want something in between. Never compare what you have to what another person has. You don't know what their situation in life is, their health style, or anything of the above. All it will do is lead you to major self-esteem issues. Comparing our accomplishments. Have you ever noticed that as women, a lot of our conversations revolve around our latest and greatest accomplishment? And it's really apparent if you spend any amount of time on social media, where a lot of women take advantage of having this fuller perception of a better life. And a lot of people suffer because they feel that they're missing out in comparison. Instead of taking apart these accomplishments or using them as a gauge to view our own success, why don't we just simply celebrate the accomplishments of other women? Use those as examples for ourselves and for our own daughters. After all, they're watching everything that's going on around them because it takes all kinds of women to make this community, this village, and this world possible. Worrying about your age. As my grandmother used to say, the perfect age is the one that you're currently at. And to me, that still holds very true. There will never be a better time than right now in your life. So stop worrying about when that next birthday will roll around. And don't put other women down because you think that they are a little too old or a little too young. You have to remember time is of the essence. It's the one thing in life that you can never get back. Celebrate what you have right now. And while we're speaking of age, younger women, 
young millennials and beyond, when you have hit 30, it is not the end of the road. It's just the beginning. In fact, I'm in my early 30s and I can't wait to see what's going on beyond it. I hear that your 40s and 50s get better and better and I can't wait to find out. Not keeping a secret secret. When another woman, another mother confides in you, it is a gift and it is a privilege. Keep those secrets secret. You can't tell anyone else. You can't tell your spouse or your children or anyone. That's what a secret is. And remember, if you want people to hold your confidence, you should do the same for them. Criticizing other women. You want to know how someone truly feels about themselves and their flaws? Listen to how they criticize other women. It's a great insight into yielding their personal emotions and how they least feel about themselves each day. Instead of criticizing other women, use this as an opportunity to learn, to ask questions, and to ascertain what it means to be a woman from different perspectives. Slut shaming. Women have the autonomy to make decisions over their lives, their business, their home, and their bodies. And you do not have the express permission to cast those feelings off on other people. In case you didn't know, here's a motto to live by. Not your vagina, not your business. Giving backhanded compliments. Telling someone that their hair looks great, but it would look better if it was a little bit shorter. Don't you just want to say, wow, thanks to these people? If you have nothing nice to say, just don't. Blaming other women when men cheat. First of all, this takes out of context that the other woman knew anything about you. Your issue is with the person that you are in a relationship with. They are the one that promised you things, told you that they loved you, and made a commitment with you to spend their life together. Don't blame anyone else. Typecasting other women. When a woman is talkative, she's not annoying. And if a woman is quiet or introverted, that doesn't mean she's stuck up. These are more reflections on how you feel about yourself. Perhaps getting to know someone would clear up a lot of those misconceptions. Stop being fake with other women. If you have problems with particular women, tell them about it or don't associate with them. Being a light, friendly person on the surface makes you nothing but disingenuous. Resenting one another's significant others. While it stinks a little that a friend or girlfriend is no longer spending as much time with you as they do their spouse or perhaps their condition in life changed and they are having more children or whatever the case may be, your issue lies with your friendship and not the other person's spouse. Take up your problems directly with them. Stop castigating opinions about their spouse because at the end of the day, your friend is going to take their spouse side over yours. Frenemies. Being passive aggressive with other women, there's just no reason for that. If you don't want to be friends with someone, just don't be friends with them. There's no reason to be competitive only so that you can take a little bit of time and energy away from someone else. Taking advantage of other women's shortcomings. Putting down another woman's personal decisions will never make you look better as a person. Subtweeting. Subtweeting passive aggressive indirect messages about other women is about the most childish thing that you can do. If you can't send someone a message directly, a text, or email them, it's not really worth your time. We're a little bit better than that. And besides, the most ineloquent way of expressing yourself is to indirectly express a feeling to someone else. Misusing the word negative. Real friends bring things to your attention, and sometimes they need to be said. We can all say things in a way that is constructive, and helpful to other people. Just because you don't like something that a true friend said to you, that does not mean that they are necessarily negative, that you should cut them from their life. Perhaps maybe that's more of a reflection of you. Saying that I won't do, say, or wear something because you're a grown woman. Don't use that term because adulthood looks different for everyone and everyone's adulthood is going to be expressed differently. Supporting other moms. Supporting other moms means just that. Even if it means watching videos of their children a hundred times, supporting moms of all kinds is a necessity. Even the moms who don't parade their children online. And keep in mind, moms, sometimes other mothers feel that they are supporting you simply by watching the influence that you create online and in your life. Sometimes people don't want to support your children, but that doesn't mean that they're not supporting you.
supporting women who aren't moms. You shouldn't just friend people who have children. This is very narrow-minded and short-sighted. Don't form cliques with other women simply because their lifestyle mirrors your lifestyle. That's very plain and boring and it doesn't make sense. It's not because you're a mother, it's because you're a woman that you are in the trenches of existence and there are women from all walks of life who can help you, give you information, and are ready to help. Don't let these people go from your life simply because they don't look sound and accept the choices that you are making right now with your children at home. All women need support. Using the term basic bitch. Listen, we should not forget that we all have a little inner basic bitch in us, whether that means each fall you are taking a hundred and one selfies with a pumpkin spice latte, or showing off your daughter's new hairstyle, or perhaps you found a great deal on a handbag and want to show everybody where you bought it, you found a deal on some pickles, you gotta share that too. Whatever it is, embrace it. We all have a little bit of that Sophia Petrillo in us, and that's what makes us all awesome. Treating feminism like a spectrum. Feminism is not a sport. It's not something you can be good at. If you fundamentally believe that men and women are equal, you are a feminist. And just because other women may not outwardly express that, that doesn't mean that they aren't. And just because women want to uplift other women, that doesn't mean that they are man-haters either. We have to learn to accept people from all different walks of life. Whether you lead a traditionalist lifestyle or you don't, there is room for everyone at the table of equality and femininity. We have to remember that, or as women, we are never going to tackle the bigger issues. If we are co-fighting with each other and placing the guise of what we believe feminism to be, we will never shatter that glass ceiling. Shaming women for how they spend money. Listen, I'm a savvy saver as much as the next, but I do recognize that a woman should be able to spend her money on whatever she wants. I hope that every woman is in a position with an equal amount of vestige in her education, her employment, her position in the home, that she has enough finances in place that she can take care of herself. And if she wants to buy something just for her, I say all the better for it. And if she got a really great deal, she should let her friend Nikki know about it. Saying that a woman got a position because of her sexuality. Reasoning that a woman gained a position at work or in the community based on her looks is one of the lowest things you can do to other women. Just no. Saying someone's boyfriend could do better than her. Not only is it super mean, but you're placing yourself in a position of authority over this other woman. You're insinuating that a woman should be perpetuated by this idea the woman's value is based on a communal standard of looks and of living. You're also believing that there's this arbitrary physical ideal that all women have to adhere to. And you know what? It just doesn't hold water. Starting fights over guys. This is never really a great idea. And besides, any person that breaks their vows to another woman, is this really someone you want in your life? Not being supportive when your girlfriend gets a new position. It's great that your friend got a new position. That means that there's upward mobility for women in that field. Be kind and be generous in your words and your actions. After all, your turn will come and you will expect the same from her. Not being supportive of your friends. Engagements, new babies, new outfits, new publications, new blogs, new podcasts, whatever it is you need to be supportive. If someone's having a baby, ask for the registry link. If someone has a new podcast, follow them. If someone starts a new account, make sure that you are on top of it because you would want them to do the same for you. Don't have other people live the way that you live. It is boring. It's beneath you. As women, we have got to support one another in the things that we do and say and perpetuate to others. And for no other reason than at the end of the day, we have to relive those actions. And more importantly, because our daughters are watching. This is a world made up and by women, and we have got to do better by ourselves for ourselves and one another. Overall, 
It's just the right thing to do. So if you have women in your life, please consider these are things that you may need to amend, and I would definitely love to hear your thoughts on all of the 33 things that I just mentioned. And with that said, as always, please be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, let me know how your week has gone, be kind to yourself, and of course to others, and have a wonderful rest of your day.